Hello everybody, we will continue our topic Salmonella. I am Dr. Sharad Deshmukh from SS Jaiswal College, Arjuni Murgaon, District Gondia. In the previous videos, we have learned about the pathogenicity of the Salmonella. In today's video, we are going to learn about the laboratory diagnosis of the enteric fever. So in the laboratory diagnosis, for the diagnosis of the enteric fever, which is made by the cultures, mainly it will include the clinical specimen, blood, stool, urine, bile or the bone marrow. Among these, the most important is the blood and the stool one and uh, rarely done is the urine and bile or the bone marrow is very rarely done. The next aspect is the Vidal test which is the serological test used for the diagnosis of the enteric fever and the third one is the demonstration of the circulating antigen. So these are the three aspects for the diagnosis of the enteric fever. First we are going to see about the blood culture. The blood culture is most commonly performed preferably in the first week of the enteric fever. Here the 5 to 10 ml of blood is collected aseptically by the vein puncture and it is inoculated in 50 to 100 ml of the bile broth or alternatively we can use the glucose broth also and then the it is incubated at 37 degrees centigrade for 24 to 48 hours here uh, the why it is necessary to take the large quantity of the uh, broth that is the bile broth because there should be the appropriate dilution of the blood to inhibit there the uh, to dilute the blood to break their inhibitory effect that's why it must be get diluted properly and after the 24 hour incubation it must be subcultured on the suitable medium like DCA and McConkey agar where you have to observe for the presence of the growth and if their growth is not there further you have to incubate the plate of the DCA and McConkey by inoculating separately then the one of the alternative to the routine blood culture is the modification that is the Castaneda's method. In Castaneda method, there is the double medium is used that is solid medium as well as liquid medium in the same bottle. That you can say it is the biphasic medium. Here, the bottle which is containing the bile broth is inoculated with the blood sample and it is incubated in the upright position. And after incubation, the bottle is tilted and it is allowed to flow on the surface of the agar so it will be subcultured and at the regular interval the subculture is also made on the McConkey agar. Here the one of the most advantage is this reduces the chances of contamination because in this case you have to within the bottle we are subculturing on the agar surface if growth is there then we are going to isolate the uh, remove the growth and subject to identification. In the blood culture the rate of positivity of the blood culture is very high in the first week that is 90% of the positivity in the first week. Just I have already told you the it is most useful in the first week of the enteric fever. While in the second week the there is a 75% of the positivity rate. In the third week it is 60% of the positivity rate and 25% uh, of the positivity is seen thereafter till the fever subsides. So in this case the culture is declared negative only after incubation of the 10 days. When you inoculate the broth for the blood culture then it should be continuously subcultured and it should be incubated for the total 10 days and then it is declared as the negative one. One of the alternative to the blood culture is the clot culture. Here the 5 ml of the blood is collected from the patient in a sterile test tube and it is allowed to clot and the serum is removed by the sterile pipette. After removing the serum, the clot is broken with the sterile glass rod and added to the bile broth bottle. And for facilitating the uh, easy lysis of the clot, the streptokinase is added in the medium. And that's why this will uh, yield the higher rate of the isolation as compared to the blood culture. 
although the isolation rate is the high but it is much more expensive for the developing countries so generally we prefer the routine bulk culture as compared to the clot culture next one is about the stool culture the stool culture is the most uh, commonly done as the bacteria are constantly shed in the feces and the salmonella are shed in the feces throughout the course of the disease so it is most preferably as a stool culture for the di diagnosis of the enteric fever the positive fecal culture occur in the patients as well as it is also useful in the detection of the carriers also the for this purpose for stool culture the there is the necessary of the use of the enrichment medium as well as the selective medium so that will increase the rate of the isolation for the enrichment purpose the specimen of the stool should be inoculated in a tube of the selenite egg broth or the tetrathionate broth and then it is incubated for at least the 6 to 12 hours in some case you have to incubate up to the 18 hours also and then it is subcultured on the maconky dca and wilson and blair medium for the isolation of the salmonella species why it is necessary to incubate in the enrichment because it contains the other organisms which may inhibit the growth of the salmonella and that's why it is necessary to go for enrichment by using the stool culture next one is the urine culture so just i have already told you that the most commonly done is the blood culture and the stool culture and it is not useful as the stool or the blood culture the urine culture and for the urine culture purpose you have to collect the uh, clean midstream urine in a sterile container and it has to be centrifuged and it is centrifuge deposit is inoculated on the maconky agar blood agar and wilson and blair medium as the bacteria are not constantly present in the urine you have to repeatedly perform the urine culture then another culture is the bile culture so it is mainly useful in the detection of the carriers it is not also commonly done like the blood culture or the stool culture so bile is processed in the same way as that of the feces culture once you perform this culture method and if you get the growth on dca maconky or wilson and blair then you have to go for the observation of the particular type of the colony what we see particularly in the maconky and the dca that is the non lactose fermenting colonies and these colonies are subjected to the identification by the morphology culture characters on the basis of biochemical reaction and a slide agglutinin test by using the group specific antisera so in this case we will see one by one about the each aspect first we have to go for the morphology which can be studied by the gram staining where you have to observe for the presence of the gram negative bacilli you also observe the motility by hanging rock preparation they should be the motile one and other character they include the non sporing and non capsulated in the culture you can see the specific characteristic of this uh, salmonella species particularly the presence of the colorless colonies or the pale colonies what we say they are the non lactose fermenting colonies which can be seen on the maconky and the dca medium when we are using the wilson and blair medium as a selective medium the salmonella typhi will form the z black colonies with the metallic sheen but the para typhi a will produce the green colonies as they are the s2s negative on the xylose lysine deoxycholate medium they will form the typical red colonies with the black center but the salmonella paratypi a will not form the with the black center it will only show the red color colonies and these colonies are subjected for the identification by the biochemical reactions so you have to perform various the biochemical tests like the sugar fermentations and various the biochemical reactions like the indol mr vp citrate urease and s2s you can see here the chart showing the salmonella typhi which ferment the glucose and mannitol with the acid and acid production only while it is mr positive and sts positive uh, in this case the para typhi species particularly para typhi a and para typhi b they are showing the fermentation of the glucose and mannitol with acid and gas production i have mentioned ag as acid and gas production while the s typhi ferment the sugar with the acid production only that is one of the differentiating feature of the para typhi a para typhi species and the salmonella typhi uh, the other tests are most of similar 
except the paratype A, which is the esters negative, that's why they are sh uh, showing the green colonies on the Wilson and Blair medium, while the paratype B is the esters positive. And one more test that is the citrate, which is the positive in paratype B, while in the uh, S type E and paratype A it is mostly seen as the negative one. Then for the further confirmation of these cultures, you can send the sample to the National Salmonella Reference Center, that is the Central Research Institute at Kasodi. Uh, for the salmonella of the animal origin that can be sent to the Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Izatnagar, and that will uh, confirm your the isolates which are shown uh, isolated in your laboratory. Thank you very much. We will continue the next part in the next lecture.